MPs return to Ottawa tomorrow as scheduled, but they're coming back to a House of Commons that's far less predictable than what it was. The Liberal NDP deal is over, raising the stakes the government could fall at any time. The Conservatives want a confidence vote as soon as possible, and the NDP insists all bets are off when it comes to how they're going to vote. We just heard from the government's House Leader. Now it's time to get the opposition's perspective. With me, Conservative House Leader Andrew Shear and NDP House Leader Peter Julian. Hello to both of you. Thank you so much for making time for the conversation. I really appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Shear, I'm going to start with you. I just talk, spoke rather to Minister Gold. She told us that she would not back end the schedule for opposition day motions, meaning that you will have a chance, she said, fairly soon to, to put forward a motion of no confidence, as you have your party leader has said he intends to do. I'm wondering, though, why you intend to do that, given that two polls this week show a majority of Canadians actually don't want an election. Aren't you just trying to force one because it's in the best interest of your party, not Canadians as a whole? No, it's in the interest of Canadians that we put an end to the Liberal government that has caused rents and mortgages to double, caused uh, crime and drug uh, crisis in our communities has seen uh, has caused the inflation crisis that took such a big bite out of workers' paychecks. That's what's at stake here, and what we're calling on the other parties to commit to, especially the NDP, to put their action where their words were. You know, there was a very dramatic and theatrical display of uh, uh, Jagmeet uh, Singh where he pretended that the deal was over. He uh, ripped up the agreement, and then he was immediately asked, "What does that mean?" And he refused to commit. And so I think this was all just uh, a ploy. There's a by-election uh, tomorrow in Winnipeg and it looks like this was all just an attempt to fool and trick voters in that particular by-election uh, that something had changed. Nothing, it seems, has changed, but we still want to put pressure on the other parties to listen to Canadians and hear from them the suffering that they're, they're, they're living under after nine years of this Liberal but government actually, and give Canadians an opportunity to choose a different way. What those two polls tell me, though, however, Mr. Scheer, is that a majority of Canadians, while yes, are definitely suffering, would like their government to work together and their politicians to work together to address those issues. 56% of Canadians, according to Ipsos, don't want an early election. Nano's polling, 54% of Canadians want the NDP and the Liberals to actually stay in that deal they had in order to avoid an early election. Why are you so set on doing something counter to what Canadians are telling you they want? They actually want your party to work with other parties rather than force an election on Canadians. Well, it's because all three of the other parties, the Liberals and their uh, allies in the NDP and the Bloc, aren't listening to Canadians when Canadians say they want to put an end to the carbon tax. Uh, polling shows that a vast majority of Canadians don't want to pay the carbon tax. They don't want to have to pay higher prices, higher home utility costs, higher shipping costs. These other parties are ignoring Canadians on that. They're ignoring Canadians when, when Canadians uh, respond to polling questions about what's causing the crime wave uh, across the country in our communities. They don't want taxpayer-funded hard drugs distributed in our communities. The Liberals and the NDP continue to push that and, uh, and defend those policies. Uh, they don't want the government to keep rewarding gatekeepers who prevent new homes from coming onto the market. So it's because this government is doubling down on its failed policies that have driven up prices, pushed people out of their homes, made our communities less safe, that we're saying, okay, well, if you're not going to listen to Canadians on that side of things, then let's at least have an election. Let's have a carbon tax election so Canadians can choose between the Liberal NDP plan to quadruple the carbon tax, to make the carbon tax even more painful, even higher, or the Conservative plan to axe the tax. Let's give Canadians that choice and why won't the okay, NDP you're... commit to putting action behind their words and voting non-confidence in this government? Okay, you neglect to mention the, the rebate, but I want to move on to the NDP and ask you, sort of jumping off what Mr. Shear spelled out, how you can, on one hand, tell Canadians that the government is weak and selfish, and also that now you will not support the consumer portion of the carbon tax, and on the other hand, even entertain the possibility of supporting them on matters of confidence. How do you reconcile that for Canadians? Well, first off, Ash, you, you forgot the, the most important part of what Jagmeet Singh said, which was uh, that Liberals are too beholden to corporate interests to actually take action on things like food price gouging, on, on the high cost of rents, we're actually financing a lot of these corporate landlords through federal government funds to the CMHC and not capping the rents in any way, uh, not building new housing and not providing the supports for health care that need to happen. So all of those things are where why we reached a, a wall in working with the Liberals. But we're going back to what we did during COVID and the NDP, we're the worker bees during 
the COVID, uh, we provided, uh, forced the government to put in place supports for small businesses and families and seniors, people with disabilities and students. Uh, families benefited from what the NDP forced the government to do. Conservatives in that former parliament and in this parliament have done absolutely nothing to help people. Pierre Polyev just wants to talk about cuts and cutting all of these programs. And so the NDP will be proceeding vote by vote, like we did during COVID, and looking at the public interest. And as you point out, uh, Canadians don't want an election immediately. They do want to see action, and that's what Jagmeet Singh and the NDP stand for. Respectfully, Mr. Julian, though, when you talk about corporate greed or high food prices, those food prices, food inflation spiked to the highest level in 40 years back in January of 2023. Your government, your party, pardon me, remained in that deal even then, and you didn't draw a line or hit a wall at that point, despite food prices peaking at a much higher rate of inflation than they're at right now. How can Canadians believe anything other than this is just about a by-election or your own electoral interests? Well, they, they see the results, and, and Mr. Scheer would know this in his writing. 650,000 Canadians have benefited from the, the NDP's dental care plan that's been rolled out. And, and I'm meeting people in the streets in my writing that are thanking me for what the NDP was able to achieve. Pharmacare will be passed in just a few weeks through the Senate. What that means is that Pharmacare, uh, the agreement, uh, the memorandum of understanding with the BC government has already been signed. Uh, so people with diabetes, there are millions of Canadians that suffer from diabetes. They pay sometimes a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars every month for their diabetes medication and devices. Families are looking uh, for, for an ability to pay for contraception. All of these things are covered through the NDP's Pharmacare plan. So these are all things that are crucial. Canadians have seen the results. Yes, we've been pushing on food price gouging. No, the Liberals and Conservatives uh, don't want to challenge in any way uh, the corporate CEOs on this. But the but reality is, if you look that. at the polls, mo most, most, ca mo most Canadians believe that the food price gouging that we're seeing is, and the record profits that we're seeing from these same grocery giants uh, are connected and that the, the federal government should be taking action. Conservatives and Liberals believe differently. The NDP is going to be pushing hard this fall uh, so that we actually do take action uh, against that. I know both your time's limited. I just have time for one question for each of you. Mr. Scheer, I want to pick up actually where Mr. Julian left off. Uh, and in particular, sort of uh, his argument on dental care as it relates to what the Liberals and the NDP are saying very specifically about what a Conservative government would mean. The removal of key programs like that one. Can you uh, unequivocally tell Canadians, would a Conservative government tell those 650,000 Canadians, for example, who have already accessed that dental care program that they no longer can? Yeah, first of all, the NDP never want to talk about government greed and government waste. And when we talk about uh, fixing the budget so that inflation and interest rates can come down, uh, that's what we're focusing on. $35 billion to the infrastructure bank that didn't build a single project, hundreds of millions of dollars more to high-priced consultants. They always like to bring up these, these scare tactics and ignore the waste and corruption that these so-called worker bees, who seem to have experienced uh, colony collapse disorder this summer because none of them wanted to show up and investigate Liberal corruption and waste. It was very, very difficult to get them to actually work over this summer. Uh, but again, it's, it's, it's all about how inflation takes a big bite out of workers' paychecks and that these programs aren't as advertised, that we're hearing from pe people all across the country saying that they're not qualifying for these programs, that uh, the dentists aren't opting in. Are you sure uh, about that? 82% of there, dentists are now there, signed there, up, dental, there, there dental are workers are signed lot, up, and 650,000 people have actually used the program. Like, that's a, that's a fact. You know, uh, Justin Trudeau accidentally admitted just a while ago that every, he, he, he actually gave a speech where he accidentally admitted that all the new government spending is keeping inflation high. He said for every dollar that he increases spending, it'll have an impact on inflation. We've seen workers' paychecks completely gutted by nine years of NDP and Liberal deficit spending and borrowing. That's why workers' paychecks don't go as far. That's why prices have risen so dramatically. And now we have... But that's not my uh, question. Uh, a smoke and mirrors trick on the carbon tax, which we know Canadians oppose. We know the Liberal NDP plan is to quadruple it. The Conservative plan is to ax it. So when Canadians are looking at how they're actually going to deal with the cost of living crisis, it's only the Conservative Party that has a plan to protect the value of the dollar they work so hard to earn, get government uh, waste and corruption 
out of Ottawa and restore the value of a Canadian's tax dollar. Okay, I just point out that my question was whether or not those 650,000 Canadians who no longer have access to we'll, dental care we'll under a, conservative government. We'll have a fully government. comprehensive that, that, plan in time for the next election. Okay, that's not an answer. Uh, f final question to you, uh, Mr. Julian. If your party loses uh, the, you know, what is colloquially called, colloquially, pardon me, called the, Dan the Blakey family seat in Winnipeg, where you are right now, should Mr. Singh remain as leader of your party? Uh, well, first I'm just going to come back to your question you asked to Mr. Shear. The, the Conservatives are refusing to be honest with Canadians, that they would cut the dental care that so many people are using, they would uh, gut pharmacare, and they would Absolutely. cut health care as they did when they were in government. So, Respectfully, uh, Mr. Julian, your party are, won't put forward a climate plan. We don't even know what you do on the carbon tax. Well, you're, I'll come back to that in a moment, but the reality is uh, Conservatives represent cuts. Now, in terms of the by-elections, we've got two great candidates. Leila uh, Dance in Elmwood Transcona is doing a magnificent job. Craig Sauvé in the Sally Maud Verdun is a terrific candidate as well. They're working hard. They're, they will be for, for formidable members of parliament representing their constituents and fighting hard on their behalf in Ottawa. Uh, we, we are confident, and, but we're not taking anything for granted. We're working very, very hard. And the reality is now we've seen in the polls uh, Mr. Polyev's uh, support is is waning. It's softening. The 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 leader now with the the largest uh, the highest approval level in the country is Jagmeet Singh, and the, U Your the party, party that has is the biggest universe points behind the conservatives. First, that and if if I may finish, the the largest universe first and second choices is the NDP. About fifty percent of Canadians have the NDP as their first or second choice. Obviously, we have work to do to convert those second choices into first choices. But I, I mentioned uh, the Winnipeg North by-election. You'll recall in 2011, we lost uh, a seat that had been NDP for decades in Winnipeg North. That was a few weeks before the big breakthrough of the orange wave in 2011 when we became official opposition. So in brief, uh, we're confident, but working hard in both by-elections. Really but we don't see a, a, the results of the Winnipeg North by-election back in 2011 show that that doesn't stop the overall momentum that people are seeing across the country so for Jagmeet Singh and the NDP. You actually believe there's momentum for Jagmeet Singh. With great respect, we've seen in the last year the Conservatives climb to a 20-point lead over the Liberals and an even bigger lead over the NDP, which has not been able to capitalize on any of the Liberals' failing fortunes. Why is that not an indictment of Mr. Singh's leadership? Again, the, the leader that has the, the highest approval level in Canada right now is Jagmeet Singh. The party that has and the largest universe seats. of first and second choices is the NDP. So we'll see how that plays out on Monday, and I'm sure you'll have us back. I will. Sure you'll be asking <laughs> questions about, about the by-elections, but we're yeah. working hard. We're not taking anything for granted. And uh, we'll continue to work hard for Canadians. Okay, we will see you both tomorrow back in the House of Commons. I appreciate you making the time for the conversation. Andrew Shear, the Conservatives' House Leader, and Peter Julian, the NDP's House Leader.